hi in this video I am going to talk about what are the different data science projects that you can work on in the field of finance so if you're already a finance professional uh, or you're somebody who wants to make a career in finance and particularly in in data science in finance you can try out these projects the first one I'll talk about is a credit scorecard building project which is uh, you know very popular in the financial service industry it's been in use for many decades now even before the word data science was coined credit scorecard has been in use by these companies so what is a credit scorecard well credit scorecard are basically used to assess the credit worthiness of customers okay so these are basically the classification models that you know the banks and services the financial services company use to um, find out who could be a good customer or could be a bad customer so based on that they actually um, they actually grant loans okay they only grant loans to the potentially good customers they also use them for pricing uh, pricing um, uh, the loan right the good customers uh, or the best type of customers uh, are, are are priced at a less rate on the other hand the uh, customers that are likely to default uh, they are being priced at a much higher rate so that's what uh, credit scorecard model building you can use a number of classification techniques such as logistic regression linear discriminant analysis decision tree random forest boosting bagging SBN uh, your neural networks to classify good and bad customers so in order to build this sort of project you can go to you just simply do a Google search on German uh, credit data you will get this data on Google uh, on many other many websites German credit data if you do a search you will get um, a, um, a customer um, sorry a, a, a credit card customer portfolio data where it has uh, the the status of whether a customer is good customer or bad customer and different customer and loan attributes so you can use that data set to build such a model the second project you could try is to build a model to uh, that would um, that will predict stock price okay so stock return forecasting or stock price forecasting model is one model that you can you can use so these models are used to predict price of a stock or an index for a given period of time whether it's you know short term forecast uh, or long term forecast you can do both using a uh, forecasting model you can download data or stock prices from different publicly listed companies such as Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Yahoo, uh, from you know different sources. Yahoo Finance is a good source. Google Finance, um, okay. So you can also uh, go to Bloomberg um, and get the data from there. Uh, in India, you can get it from NSC, uh, BSC's uh, website. Okay, so that's easily available. You can use number of uh, techniques. You can use time series uh, modeling techniques such as ARIMA, AR, MA. Uh, you can also use uh, exponential smoothing to build forecasting model. Portfolio optimization problem. Um, so this is used um, to to sort of find out the optimal uh, weight that you should assign to different you know different assets in a portfolio that means how much asset you should hold from different uh, asset classes um, so one case would be assume you are working as an advisor uh, to high net worth individuals who wants to you know they want to diversify uh, let's say 1 million cash into 20 different stocks so how do you advise him how do you select 20 you know uh, most profitable stocks out of let's say 1000 listed stocks and um, you should also ensure that these 20 stocks that you choose out of 1000 they should be least correlated that means if one stock is doing good the other stock I mean if one of these 20 stocks is doing bad if all of them are correlated then all of them will do bad right so it's always uh, preferred that you know the list of stocks that you are selecting in the portfolio they should be uncorrelated okay so for that you will be using the operation research algorithm um, to find out the optimal uh, weight 
and and the best set of 20 stocks out of let's say thousand stocks okay so you can use um, this portfolio optimization algorithms uh, you can use solver uh, in excel or you can write your own optimization routine in, in any of the programming languages uh, in r in 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 sas matlab you already have built in functions you can use them segmentation modeling is another project you can do so financial services are increasingly becoming uh, tailored made right there are different segments of customers and companies uh, banks and financial service companies they are trying their best to you know cater to different segments of customers in a different manner so that that would be uh, they would be able to reach out to them in, in in the best possible way so they want because banks and these companies they want a bespoke solution to uh, the problems uh, from different segments okay uh, there are high net worth individuals there are middle income and there are low income so you cannot serve them in a similar way right you need some segmentation and that's where segmentation modeling come into picture so <clears throat> you need to, you can build a model uh, to uh, you know best segment the entire portfolio entire data into different segments so there could be many um, such uh, many you know already uh, so by business you have many segments like uh, based on gender, based on demography, based on income, based on credit score, and so on. But you can use data driven techniques to segment your data. You can use decision tree clustering to build segmentation model. Okay, so the idea of segmentation model is to classify uh, or segment data and also to find out optimal number of segments okay so these two you can do using a segmentation model revenue forecasting most of this company nowadays they want an accurate forecast of their, their revenue for quarter two quarter and three quarter from now that's very important for banks actually you know, nowadays with the regulations in place you your banks and other financial institutions um, they have to project their revenue uh, and, and possibly loss for future okay for that it's slightly you know more complicated because you know this is more to do with finance so if you are already a finance guy you know how the balance sheet looks like what are the different you know components of uh, balance sheet you can take help of all this data and 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 use your domain knowledge and whatever data you have uh, based on this you know there's different uh, aspects of balance sheet you can even do some kind of forecasting this will be more of a multivariate statistical analysis where you have time series data as well as you have cross-sectional data as well. So you can combine both, you know, for forecasting uh, revenues for uh, a quarter or a two, two, three, two to three quarter from now. Pricing of financial products. Okay, so this is one of the most sophisticated um, uh, area of finance where you are trying to price the products the financial products that you are selling whether it's you know a car loan uh, or the mortgage or whether it's more even more complicated you know products such as uh, you know uh, derivative products derivative products uh, options swaps future and forward and so on so these products if you're familiar with finance you know these are some of the common products banks deal with so you can use uh, you know many of this pricing modeling technique to sort of price these products you know you need not use ml or statistical modeling you need to use a bit of uh, stochastic calculus uh, to you know to develop pricing models uh, nowadays there are also people experimenting with uh, ml techniques to you know price derivatives so you can also have a look at it you can you can do a google search you'll, you'll get some um some idea about what people are trying to do using ml okay and it's also a new field so you can also contribute you know there isn't much literature on how to use ml to you know uh, price uh, financial products such as future forward options 
um, it's heavily stochastic calculus dominated so you know that's one area where uh, one can contribute prepayment models so prepayment as you know is like payment paying uh, something before it is due okay this happens mostly in mortgage you know people take money but they pay back uh, or they repay the money uh, loan uh, before it is due and that's a law that's not a good thing for the bank because the bank is not able to make money out of the mortgage that it has lent out to the customer so in those situations bank incurs uh, loss okay so bank uh, what they want to know is they want to know how many customers are going to prepay in the future so that prediction model uh, is something that banks are interested in so prepayment uh, is a big problem for banks because they lose money out of it so for uh, most of the retail products mortgage car loan and you know, personal loan and so on they want to use uh, uh, you know a predict customer who could potentially prepay so you can build another model just to if some a customer is is going to prepay or not okay and then you will also so there could be many projects like one project could be uh, chances of chances of uh, prepay uh, the other project could be uh, time time of prepayments if somebody is uh, going to prepay then when exactly he is going to prepay so that could be you can use uh, you know survival analysis here uh, and this could be more of a classification a logistic regression or decision tree that kind of model will 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 uh, do fraud model is one of the most popular model used in banks and most type of financial service company not 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 alone in financial companies in fact anywhere you have now uh, e-commerce transaction happening fraud models are fraud or anti-money laundering ml models are, are you know heavily being uh, deployed because of cyber crime and, and, and these things. So these models are being used to know if a particular transaction, whether it's a credit card transaction, whether it is any transaction that's happening online or offline is fraudulent. And if that is what is found out, then you know the bank cancels the transaction and you know it, it automates it. You don't have to manually uh, sort of intervene into it. It gets automated using a classification algorithm and one that has a higher chances of being a fraud uh, transaction that gets cancelled automatically you know so you can use and by the way this is very interesting uh, this is an interesting project there's so many data on Kaggle on fraud data um, so fraud is one case where you know the percentage of your you know events is is very very less compared to non events you know that's typical case where uh, you will be using uh, the anomaly detection models okay where only a small section of the data is showing the behavior of event okay so in that case you will be using uh, you know more of a classification technique that can handle a low event uh, event data